now things are going to take a little bit different pace and a little bit different feel. We're starting unit three. We've given you enough OpenMP background so you can start doing some serious OpenMP programming. And, and that's, as I said, one of the really cool things about OpenMP is it's very simple. Because if you think about it, there is, isn't an awful lot you've had to learn. And you can go off and, and take some real applications and start parallelizing them. So now we're going to start focusing on working with OpenMP. Actually, you know, some of the, the gotchas and some of the cases you need when you start applying it real broadly. So now we're going to talk about a collection of constructs that eh, just haven't, you know, we've wanted to talk about along the way, but we haven't quite gotten to yet. I just want to kind of wrap them up to make sure you have a good overall grasp of the major constructs in OpenMP. To start with, I want to come back to barrier. So we introduced the concept of barrier earlier, and I gave you a very, very simple case of barrier. Now let's go into this a little bit deeper. And what I want to talk about is where barriers are implied and where barriers are explicit. Because there are places in OpenMP where we just know you need a barrier and put it there for you. So here we go. In this code, so take a close look at this code. This is the SPMD pattern, which by now you should be completely familiar with what I mean by that. That every single thread is going to run the same code, but they're going to do something slightly different by looking at what their ID is. So I'm going to go ahead and I have inside this region, I have shared variables A, B, and C. I'm kind of sneaking a data clause on you. So we have A, B, and C that are shared. And we have a variable that's private to each thread called ID. So that's what that private clause does. Next module, we will go through those in excruciatingly de excruciating detail. But right now, I just want you to hold in your head that we have an SPMD section. We have a pragma OMP parallel. We have three arrays, A, B, and C, that all the threads can see and write to. And each and every thread has its own private variable ID. So of course, ID equals OMP get thread num so that every thread has its own ID. So then the first thing I'm going to do is each thread's going to go off and do some big, hairy, messy calculation based on its ID, and it's going to park its result in the array A. So then I have an explicit barrier, because I'm going to use A later on, and I don't want anyone to go further until everyone's computed A. All right, we even saw that before, so that's pretty straightforward. Now we come into a loop, okay? Pragma OMP4, then I have a loop. And in this loop, I'm going to do another calculation where I'm going to be filling an array C using that array A. Okay? Now, at the end of that loop, we put an implicit barrier. Now, what that means is no threads go beyond the end of that loop until all of the threads have finished. Now, there's nothing in the concept of a parallel loop that requires we made that decision. We defined it that way, though, because it's safest. Because most of the time, after you do a computation inside a loop, hey, you go on, you're going to use that calculation. So to keep things safe, to decrease the chances of programmers stupidly stumbling into a mistake, we do the default safe behavior, which is there's an implied barrier at the end of every parallel loop. And that's what you see in this code. And that holds for any work-sharing construct. A work-sharing construct in OpenMP comes along. Default behavior is there's a barrier at the end of that construct. All right, now look at this code very closely. I do a computation. It's another big calc. It's going to use the array C, so I, I really did have to wait until the previous loop was done. But now I'm not using B in the following statement to the loop. So why would I want that barrier there? Remember, anytime you're throwing synchronization constructs, barriers, critical sections, atomics, those add overhead. Because remember, if someone's sitting and waiting at a barrier for everyone else to finish, they're not doing useful work. That kills your performance. So barriers, you want them when you need them, but if you don't need them, you just assume they weren't there. So look what I did to that loop. When I recognize that it's OK not to wait at the end of that loop. It's OK not to put a barrier there. I wanted to tell the compiler that. I wanted to change the default behavior. That's what no wait did. So pragma OMP for no wait. The no wait clause says, don't put that barrier at the end of this loop. Skip it. So as soon as a thread finishes with its work in the loop, it will immediately go on to the next statement. All right, it'll skip the barrier. So no wait turns off the barriers. Now let me warn you, you're taking on a lot of risk there. 
You are assuming my knowledge of the algorithm tells me it's safe to skip that barrier. And many people would say, you're just, you know, it's, 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 we're giving you a lot of rope to hang yourself. So be very careful with no weights. Use them when you can. They have very real benefit. But anytime you put one in a program, remember, you're saying, I know what's safe to keep going. So then we do that last calculation on A, and then we get to the end of the parallel region. There's an implicit barrier there, and there's no way to turn that off. Because it kind of makes no sense, right? I mean, at the end of a parallel region, all the threads collapse down, and only the master goes on. There's no way you would want to turn off that barrier at the end of the parallel region. So we have an implied barrier at the end of a parallel region, and you can't turn it off. It's always there. Phew. So that's it with barriers. Now, let's talk about the master construct. The master construct says that I'm going to have a block of code, a structured block, and only the master thread will do it. Everyone else will just skip it and keep right on going. There's no synchronization implied. So take a look at this code I have right here. All right? I have a parallel region. This is an SPMD program. I enter into there. Each thread calls this function do many things. So yeah, it's compute intensive. We do all sorts of stuff. And then I'm going to exchange some boundary conditions. I don't know what that means. Who cares? But I want one thread to call a function that, that's then going to do something before everyone goes on. And so I just, since I have to choose one thread, I might as well choose the master. So pragma OMP master says the master thread with id equals zero will do the work inside that region. All right? But there's no synchronization implied. So everyone else just keeps right on going. Well, in this case, if I'm exchanging boundary conditions before the next computation comes, I probably want everyone to wait. So I have to explicitly tell them, ah, guys, wait. So I put a pragma OMP barrier after that master. So very important. Master says just the master thread does the structured block, but there's no synchronization implied. So if I want everyone to wait to see the result of what the master did, I better put a barrier there. All right, now, here's another work sharing construct. And in the advanced OpenMP class, I spend a lot of time in this construct. But we're just going to touch on it a little bit. It's called single. And single's pretty nifty. What it says is, only one thread will do the work in the structured block that's attached to the single. Only one thread. The first thread that gets to it will do the work, all right? But it's a work sharing construct. What did I say about synchronization and work sharing constructs? Go ahead, I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Here, you're right. You put a barrier at the end of any work sharing construct. So unlike master, where if you weren't the master, you just skipped it and kept right on going, with single, if you're not that one thread that got it, you're going to wait at the barrier at the end of the single. So now look at this code, all right? It's the same as the one we had before. I have a pragma OMP parallel. I do a whole bunch of things, and then one thread's going to go off and exchange the boundaries, and then they're going to go on and do many other things. But I didn't need to put the barrier there because I could use the implied barrier at the end of that work, at the end of that, uh, work sharing construct. Now, just like I could put a no wait on a for loop when I want to skip that barrier, I can put a no wait on a single. So I could have pragma OMP single no wait, which says, OK, other threads, don't wait at the end of that, uh, at the end of that construct. Use it very carefully, but it, you can do some pretty nifty stuffs with uh, pragma OMP single no wait. All right, now, here comes the other work sharing construct. This one isn't used as much, but uh, you know, for completeness, I want you to, to know about it. It's called the sections construct. And it actually, you get a pair. You get sections plural and sections singular. Well, what this does is it gives you a way to create sections of code, and one thread does one section, another thread does another, another section, another thread does another section. So there are times you just want to do that. So in this example, I have a calculation I want to do in the x direction, a calculation I want to do in the y direction, a calculation I want to do in the z direction. So I have three different calculations. I don't care who does which, I just want one thread to do each of them. So I tell the compiler that I want to create a team of threads. So as always, got to be a pragma OMP parallel to say create the threads. Then I tell the compiler to expect some section constructs. So I create these sections, plural. So pragma OMP sections. So now I got my curly braces. Now inside those curly braces, I'll have the section construct. And in this case, I have a pragma OMP section 
then the structured block to do the X calculation, pragma OMP section, structured block to do the Y calculation, pragma OMP section, structured block to do the Z calculation. So this is the way sections works. Um, personally, I don't use it very much, but for completeness it's there and, and it does come up from time to time.